Christmas computer. Okay, so uh, Dr. Dan Kernan and I are here to do an example of how to calculate the slope of a secant line, and then we're going to try and look at how that relates to the slope of a tangent line. So um, in part A here, we're asked to find the slope of the secant line for when x1 is 3 and x2 is 3.5 for the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. So remember that the slope of the secant line is f of what? x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1. Um, so that would be f of 3.5 minus f of 3 all over 3.5 minus 3. So 3.5, when I plug that in, it's going to be 3.5 squared, which is, um, we did this ahead of time, that's 10.25 plus 2 12. times 3.5, 12.25. Good, thank you. I think it's 12.25. Yeah. 12.25 plus 2 times 3.5, which would be 7, plus 1, minus, and this is where my, where I need the tablet to keep it, these things on the screen. So, okay, so that whole quantity minus now, what is that? F of 3 would be 9 plus 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. And then again, on the bottom, we have 3.5 minus 3. So if I did that right, that would be what? 7 plus 12.25 plus 1 is 20.25 minus 16 Sounds like me. all over 0.5. That's 4.25 all over 0.5, which is the same. Dividing by 0.5 is the same as multiplying by 2. So I guess that's 8.5 is the slope of the secant line between those two points. Does that seem right? Okay. That seems right to me. You know, basically, if you're thinking about it, remember this is just the same thing as if you were taking the slope of a, a regular line. Um, only this case, remember, a secant line is where you have two points on some sort of curve that you're connecting. Yeah. OK, so then um, I plotted this in Desmos so we could see what we just calculated. And so here's the point 316, and here's the point 3.5, 20.25. And so if we're calculating the slope of the secant line, we're calculating the slope of that red line that is going through those two points. Um, and we calculated that was 8.5. And if I, I plug this into, into Desmos, that, that quantity was 8.5. Right. So it's telling us that. And then I guess, Dan, what would we want to do if we wanted to make a better approximation to the slope at, let's say, 3, 16? Right. So the problem we have with it is that this is a curve, not a straight line. And we want to find the slope at a point rather than for the, an entire line. So if we wanted to have a better approximation, we should get closer to the point where we want, which is 316. So that 3.5 is a little bit too far away. Mm -hmm. So why don't you make the second point a little bit closer to that 316? Okay, so I can slide it in, maybe make it 3.25. That would be the h value there. The difference would be 0.25, the difference in the x values. And then um, it says now it gives us a slope of 8.25. So we went from 8.5 down to 8.25. Maybe if I just type in a value like, I don't know, 0.1, mm -hmm. then we get a value of 8.1. Um, so what do you think the slope actually is at 316? Well, it's, it went from 8.5 to 8.25 to 8.1. If I had to guess, it seems like it would be 8. Yeah, and if I plug in, if I plug in um, 0 0.01, then mm -hmm. I get 8.01. So that's getting really close to 8. And I wonder if I can go even further. Okay. Yeah, it just keeps getting closer and closer and closer to eight. But if I plug in zero, what happens? I guess that's the other thing to know. Just if I uh, so zero. Well, that would be perfect if it worked. Oh, yeah. there's a problem with that. Right. So if we plug in h equals zero, then we're dividing by zero, and so we get something that's undefined, which is, I guess, the, the whole point in using the limit definition of the derivative is that you have to take the limit, and you can't actually plug in just h equals zero into this difference quotient. 
I mean, it's always tempted to say like, but we, we had a pretty good guess that it was going to probably, that it seems like it's going towards eight, and that's, that's a useful thing to know. But when you have weirder numbers, um, this, is, this seems like it's going to a nice number. But mm -hmm. what if it was a big decimal or um, an irrational number, like the decimal went on forever, even when it was the exact slope? That wouldn't work. So it's a lot safer to use the limit in mm -hmm. all circumstances, because it'll always work if you use the limit. That's true. Perfect. Okay. Um...